What's up, pet parents? Thank you so much for being here. My name is Jessica. I am the furry family coach, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about Elon Musk. Yes, Elon Musk actually weighed in a little bit on pet food. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to give you links directly to the Wall Street Journal interview that he did, and I'm so excited to bring this to you because, I mean, Elon Musk, guys, yes! Okay, so let's get right into it. All right, real quick before we get started, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, and if you look right down there at that subscribe button and it is red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications, that way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video, and also, very important, comment down below if you have questions, if you have comments about this video, let me know. I would love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Each and every one of you doesn't, I mean, everybody that watches my videos is incredibly important to me, so I care what you have to say and the questions that you need answered, so make sure to post those down below in the comment section. All right, so I have my notes here because I watched this interview twice. I watched a kind of shortened video of it where the interviewer was not asking the questions. It was just all Elon's answers. And then I also watched the whole Wall Street Journal interview with the uh, person answer, asking the questions and, and then Elon was answering them. So I've watched it a couple of times and I went through to pick out the really good point, like the points that I think are going to mean the most to you. So definitely when is when this video is over, check the description for the link to the entire Wall Street Journal interview. It's about 27 minutes long, not too long. So he gave an interview, Elon Musk gave an interview to the Wall Street Journal. It was published on December 8th, 2020, and it was all about, it was about innovation and regulation. And if you are not familiar with Elon Musk, he is, it, not just in my opinion, but in many people's opinions, probably like the genius of our time. So like, you know, hundreds of years ago, Albert, it was Albert Einstein, right? And then like, there are people throughout time that just really stand out is like, wow, those people really made a difference. They were uber smart. They did things to make the world a better place. They came up with things. Elon Musk is one of those people. So if you don't know who he is, he you've probably been living under a rock, but no more because now you are going to know who he is. He created, so he actually invented PayPal, sold it, took that money to start Tesla. So you probably have heard of Tesla. It is an incredibly, incredibly innovative car company in the United States and he has expanded throughout the world. And he also runs SpaceX. He also has a boring company where he is digging tunnels to so that we can travel in three dimensions, air, ground, and underground as he calls it, 3D, and he also is the inventor and creator of Neuralink, which hasn't come out to the public yet, but it is something that he is working on, which is also incredibly amazing. So let's get into the Wall Street Journal interview where Elon Musk actually talks about pet food. So I listen to a lot of Elon Musk. He is innovative. He is intelligent. He understands the consumer, like he understands that the product that you bring to market has to benefit the consumer and not just line your pockets with money, right? Like that's his, that's the basis of everything he does and making the world a better place. So I listen to a lot of what he does, a lot of what he says. He is very witty on Twitter, but um, this particular interview with the Wall Street Journal really stood out to me because he called out pet food companies. Elon says, large companies control regulation. They have lobbyists and get legislators to pass legislation that benefits them. We all know this, right? So here are some quotes from Elon throughout the interview and specifically surrounding pet food. So I'm going to pull them up on the screen here. When you have a duopoly or oligopoly, they're generally going to have a weak response to their customer. And if they're a monopoly, they're going to have the weakest response to the customer. Those are important. A monopoly means you are the only one in the market providing that product or service to consumers. Um, a duopoly means there are two companies providing that product or service to consumers. And an oligopoly means there are roughly three that would be providing products or services of the same product or service to consumers. So he goes on to say, how many candy companies are there? Big candy is consolidated into like three companies or something. Very true. 
And they also own all the dog food and the baby food. So it's like, when's the last time there was some good candy? What's the forcing function for a new candy bar? I haven't seen one in ages. So we've got to watch this consolidation that ends up resulting in lower responsiveness to the end customer. You know, it's really interesting. I had, this was probably a year and a half ago, I was in a group on Facebook talking about big pet food and the kibble companies and how kibble is not good for our pets and somebody responded that you know they couldn't be all bad like there has to be something good about kibble which you know it is what it is that we really got into talking about why there is no research right being funded for the benefits of a fresh food diet or raw food diet for our pets. And my point was that it all came down to money, right? These big kibble companies, which now are all owned, mostly owned, by Big Candy, of which there are three, right? They're not going to fund studies into fresh foods and raw foods and home, foods you can make yourself at home, right? They're not going to fund these studies. It doesn't benefit them. And of course, this person was like, oh, that's ridiculous. So, you know, we'll, we'll just have to agree to disagree, whatever. But this Elon is talking exactly about, my point was, like, there is nothing in it for these big companies, which by the way, Mars, which is probably the most well-known candy company, for years, right now, and for many years in the past, really technically is not a candy company anymore. And by that I mean they make more of their money in pet food than they do in candy. So when you look at it that way, where does the bulk of their uh, pro money come from? Where does the bulk of their profit come from? It's from pet food, not from candy. So they're really not a candy company anymore. They're really a pet food company now, but they haven't branded themselves that way. They actually would prefer that you didn't know that they actually controlled all of these kibble companies. So let's get back to Elon and some more quotes from this particular interview because they really make my point as to why we need to be our pets advocates and not trust these kibble companies, which are really the candy companies, which are really an oligopoly, according to what Elon Musk has just said, and that they really have no benefit. They, they are completely out of the feedback loop when it comes to their end customer, which is exactly what he's saying in the next quote that I'm getting ready to give you from this Wall Street Journal article. As you get closer to a monopoly, the feedback loop gets weaker and less responsive to the customer. That's where you have something which does not maximize the happiness of people, which should be our objective overall. Elon also goes on to talk about rules and regulation and how if the rules are what we actually want them to be, like common sense regulation, right? We, there's a lot of rules on the books that we should probably get rid of, and he says that. And then there are other rules that really need to be enforced because it benefits us, the consumer, it benefits the population. So, you know, if we have these rules and regulations in place that actually are, you know, are common sense rules, then we can trust more in the ethical behavior that these companies would actually be engaging in because we have common sense rules and regulations and not rules and regulations that were put into place to benefit these large companies, these monopolies and duopolies and oligopolies. I don't even want to get started with what the FDA and the USDA lets these big kibble companies, really big candy companies, get away with because they have so much money and they have many, many lobbyists and they really do bend and, and have rules and regulations made to benefit them and not the consumer. In this interview, Elon Musk also talks about California because he very famously is also moving from California to Texas, has already moved from California to Texas, which my husband and I are also in the process of doing. And when he's talking about what's going on, what's happening in California and why he left and why so many people are leaving, it also holds true for these large corporations, specifically in this instance, Big Pet Food. He says, if a team has been winning for too long, they tend to get complacent, entitled, and they don't win the championship anymore. Again, he's talking about California, but we can see how that makes sense in so many different aspects. 
and with these big companies and conglomerates. So I'm going to leave you with one more quote that Elon said in this particular interview. He was asked about you know, what he would recommend to the leaders of America and he says, there's innovations but our CEOs focused enough on product improvement. And I think the answer is no. And I think generally my advice or recommendation would really be spend less time on finance, spend less time in conference rooms, less time on PowerPoint, and more time just trying to make your product amazing as possible. And this really holds true for so many things because Elon's philosophy and really I, I think in the past, many business philosophies, now not so much, and that's unfortunate. I think we need to get back to this. The idea of going into business for profit is secondary, right? You go into business because you have a product or service that your user, the end user, needs, and it's a good product or a good service, and it really benefits them, and it is worth their time and money. And when you do that, when you have a product or service that is heads and tails above anything else on the market, profits follow. So that really, really struck a chord with me, especially because he, although it was very brief, he called out these big pet food companies saying that, you know, all these, the three big candy companies in America own all of the pet food and all of the baby food. And it's not 100%, but it's a lot. It's it's pretty much, I would say, at least 95, 97% of all kibble that you're finding in the stores. When you go to the grocery store and you go down that pet food aisle, a lot of the, most of the products you're finding in Petco and PetSmart and Cahoots and whatever pet store you're shopping in, there are some companies that this does not apply to. And if you are in my group or if you follow me on Patreon, which I highly recommend that you do, you can check the link in the description below. There are links to my recommended products, my recommended foods to feed, why you should not be feeding Kimball. And I'm also doing a 2021 pet food challenge, which I highly recommend all of you partake in. Again, I have a video launching it on my YouTube channel, which I will link in the description below. But if you want to follow along, definitely check out my Patreon because that's where we're going to be um, actually participating in the challenge throughout 2021. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you take the time to watch the full interview with Elon and really let it sink in as to how what he's talking about applies to the kibble that you're feeding your pets because it does. It just does. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate you. I hope you give this video a big thumbs up. I hope you like it. But you know what? If you don't like it, YouTube makes a button for you too. Make sure you do comment down below. I love hearing from you. Any questions you have, any comments you have, please leave them down below in the comments box. And if you look right down there at that subscribe button and it is red, click it and turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear next to it. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for being here with me today on YouTube. And I really, I really appreciate each and every one of you, each and every one of my viewers from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.